We now interrupt your entertainment to bring you the daily dose of weird news. I'm Darren Marlar. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook Could It Be True? Volume 1 Urban Legends by Cindy Parmenter, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample of this creepy and true audiobook at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. North Korea invents the iPad. A North Korean company has launched a new tablet and they've come up with an interesting name for it – the iPad. <laughs> no kidding. Of course, this product, created by a partially state-owned company called Ryan Hung, is very different from the Apple iPad that we know. The Android operating system is far more limited and users have access to only 40 pre-installed apps, including a calculator, a health encyclopedia, and an agricultural program. It'll log in to the North Korean intranet and has 1 gig of RAM, 8 gig of storage, and a 1.2 gigahertz quad-core processor. Of course, copyright lawyers will no doubt be interested in such a flagrant abuse of Apple's trademarks, but it's kind of hard to believe anybody with Pyongyang is going to care about that. In fact, North Korea has ripped off Western names and ideas several times before, including their own version of Netflix, which generally shows nothing but programs about Kim Jong-un. Nike says it'll continue to endorse Tiger Woods following his arrest for DUI. He'll be part of their new Just Don't Do It line. A New Hampshire Police Department has issued a new public service announcement with a message that reminds citizens it is illegal to possess recreational marijuana in New Hampshire, even if you only smoke it in Massachusetts. The idea for the somewhat humorous announcement came after the arrest of 27-year-old Selkett Taylor, who was initially pulled over for using his cell phone while driving. But then the officers saw a bag of marijuana in a cup holder. Taylor's excuse was that he only smoked it in Massachusetts where recreational marijuana is now legal. Well, along with his creative excuse, he also gave police quite the mugshot, where he appears to be laughing hysterically. The mugshot was used with the new public service announcement. Donald Trump has pulled the United States out of the landmark Paris Climate Agreement. As a result, I think it's now legal to smoke in the White House. In an effort to compete with Amazon, Walmart is testing a program that allows store workers to deliver packages ordered on the store's website after they finish their shifts on the way home. The company says the step will cut shipping costs, speed the delivery of packages, and allow workers to earn additional compensation. You know, seeing as most Walmart workers are so underpaid they have to deliver pizzas as a second job anyway, at least we know the Walmart delivery people will have experience. A psychologist says the average person is keeping 13 secrets. And for the record, most of them are about you. A Massachusetts coffee shop owner says he received a cease and desist letter from Dunkin' Donuts claiming trademark infringement for using a play on the chain's catchphrase. Steve Kopoulos says he added window art on his Mike's Coffee Shop in North Attenborough, which said, North now runs on Mike's. While he expected a few laughs from customers, Steve says he was surprised to find the letter from the Canton, Massachusetts-based coffee shop chain claiming he was infringing on their America Runs on Duncan slogan and his variation implied an affiliation. Well, so he took down the sign, explaining he wants to be the exact opposite of a corporate coffee chain. Of course, the bigger question is, why does a guy named Steve have a coffee shop called Mike's? A 30-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of murder after three dead bodies were found in a Liverpool home where John Lennon once lived. Well, how do we know John Lennon didn't do it? The New York Daily News printed a headline last week that harkened back to their legendary mid-1970s headline after President Ford refused to bail out then-financially-strapped New York City. That headline read, Ford to New York, drop dead. Well, last week's headline screamed out, Trump to the world, drop dead. But then this is also the same paper that had the headline, Headless Body Found in Topless Bar, so it's kind of hard to take them seriously about anything. The nuclear reactor at Three Mile Island will reportedly be shut down in 2019. Okay, raise your hands if you already thought it was shut down. Yeah, I mean, me, me too. A contest named simply Who Can Drink More Vodka? was organized in the city of Volgandosk, Russia, by a local supermarket. A total of 40 men took part in downed vodka which had been put in buckets. Five participants had to be rushed to intensive care, and the quote-unquote winner died from alcohol poisoning after downing an estimated three quarts. 
Okay, here's a tip for you. Entering a contest called Who Can Drink More Vodka is never a wise move. The Marlar House mobile app is now available, and it's free. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Watch Marlar House YouTube videos. Check out the t-shirts, mugs, audiobooks, and other stuff in the Marlar House store. See what's in my blog and more. It's all in one app, and it's free for iOS and Android users. Download it now by clicking on the mobile app tab at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on your own social media. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for on the Facebook page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!